Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum. In previous lecture, we discussed order Gymnophiana and order Eurydella in detail. In today's lecture, we will develop understanding about order Aneura and their characteristics. By the way, this is the order from which you are most familiar and consider them as true amphibians. Anyhow, I hope after the previous lectures, you will now consider order Gymnophiona and order Caudata as amphibians. So let us start with order Aneura. The word Aneura is a Greek word which means no tail. So the members of this order are tailless, which is an obvious common character in adults. This order includes frogs and toads with approximately more than 4,000 species. And all these species passes through a larval stage in which they possesses a tail. But in adult stage, they lost their tail after metamorphosis, except one genus, Ascaphus, that contains a tail-like structure in adults. This is the image of a toad. We will discuss it in later slides. The alternative name for order A neura is Salientia, which means leaping. And here is the image of a leaping frog. The name is suggested because frog and toads are specialized for jumping mode of locomotion. Thus, by jumping, they move from one place to another. Members of this order are distinguished from order Caudata in terms of larval appearance, which is tet pole or polywong shape usually. Further, they also exhibit different life habit in terms of metamorphosis during development. And this is the picture of a frog with its tympanum membrane, which we discussed in the last lecture. So here is our tet pole having long fin tail with both internal and external gills having no legs. Further, the mouth parts are specialized for herbivorous feeding. But there are some tadpoles which are carnivorous like salamander larvae. Their internal anatomy is highly specialized that look and act entirely different from adult frog. Here in this image, you can see they have both internal gills and external gills. But initially, tadpole have external gills, which later replaced by internal gills while development. Metamorphosis of a frog tadpole to an adult frog is a prominent transformation. The word striking means prominent. Moreover, you will never see neotenic conditions in frogs or toads, which was common in salamanders. Aneurans represent a specialized side of amphibians evolution and are not a good representator of vertebrate body plan as evident in this image. They have no visible neck as you can see over here. Further, their caudal vertebrae are fused to form a structure called urostyle. From here, vertebrae got fused and from your style. No ribs are present. And you can see their hind limbs are also enlarged. Thus, they are unique in their own kind. Frogs and toads are divided into 44 different families. The best known frog families of North America are Renidae, also known as grass frogs, which contain most of the familiar frogs. And the other is Halidae, commonly known as tree frogs. This first image is of northern green frog. And this other one is tree frog. Two toads belong to family Buffonidae. Here is the picture of a toad. You can see 
they have short legs these are their short legs stouted body and thick skin usually with prominent warts these are the warts you can see over here these are warts further this word toad is also used informally to refer some terrestrial members of several families west african goliath frog is the largest inurin on the earth the size of more than 30 cm long from tip of the nose to anus the weight of this giant is more than 3 kg or approximately 7 pounds it is also reported that it eats animal as large as rats and ducks here are few images of goliath frog and this is the baby deer and this is our goliath frog similarly the smallest anurin on the earth is cuban leaf climber frog which is also known as smallest tetrapod their size is less than one centimeter and they are so tiny that even a rupee coin can cover them here is the image of this cute frog in america the largest frog is bullfrog which reaches to the length of up to 20 centimeter here is a picture of their lovely bullfrog the most familiar frog species belong to family renidae species of genus rana are the most successful and abundant frogs i hope you might remember rana tigrina from fsc anyhow this genus rana have approximately 260 species and can be found throughout the temperate and tropical region of the world except new zealand oceanic islands and southern south america further they usually live near water but some species like wood frog spend most of the time in damp forest floor most of the larger frogs live single or alone in regular days but during breeding season they try to find mate for themselves males usually make very noisy calls for female during breeding period in rest of the days frogs are mainly silent and their presence cannot be detected until they are disturbed in this image spring peeper is calling for female desperately i also shared a link in description related to their calls do check it during winter season these lonely frogs hibernate in soft mud at the bottom of pools and streams further during hibernation low energy is required for their life processes which they usually derive from glycogen and fat stored in their bodies during spring and summer season most terrestrial frogs like tree frogs hibernate in the humus of the forest floor humus is the organic soil formed by the decomposition of plant material moreover they are good in tolerating low temperatures of the cold winter many frost tolerant frogs actually survive by freezing all their extracellular fluid and representing 35 percent of body water further they accumulate glucose glycerol in body fluids to protect tissues from damaging by formation of ice crystals adult frogs have many natural enemies including snakes aquatic birds turtles raccoons and humans this is the image of aquatic bird and these are raccoons and by the way you are the human example these poor animals are usually defenseless but some species of tropical and subtropical are very aggressive they jump and bite the tiger while others are great actors they play dead to avoid predation further Few frogs blow up lungs with air to increase their size so that they become hard to swallow. But for most of the frogs, jumping is the best defense to avoid their enemies. Here is a picture of jumping frog. However, few species develop poison glands 
for their defense and these are the poison glands now let's talk about their skin a frog skin is thin and moist and it is loosely attached to the body at certain points histologically the skin contains two layer an outer stratified epidermis and an inner spongy dermis here you can see this is the stratified epidermis stratified mean layer wise and this yellow is the spongy dermis further frogs periodically shed their outer layer of epidermis because it contain deposits of keratin a tough fibrous protein that basically reduce abrasion and loss of water from the skin moreover terrestrial organisms like toad have heavy deposits of keratin but remember amphibian's keratin is soft compared to hard keratin of amniotes amniotes include reptile birds and mammals we will discuss them later inshallah in this diagram beneath epidermis and inside dermis two types of glands are present one is mucus gland this one responsible to secrete protective waterproofing mucus while this other large granular gland is serous gland and responsible to secrete whitish watery poison all amphibians produce skin poison but their effectiveness vary from species to species for instance small south american tetrapodid frogs are used by colombian tribes to poison their gun darts some other members of tetrapodid family also produce most lethal secretions and are known to be more poisonous than venoms of sea snake or any of the most venomous arachnid moreover frog dermis also contain several types of special pigment cells called chromatophores these chromatophores are basically branch cells that contain pigments that may be concentrated to a small area or may be dispersed throughout the branch cell to control color using this mechanism many frogs adjust their color with the background and thus camouflage themselves Amphibians support its body and muscular movement with well-developed endoskeleton of bone and cartilage. Moreover, the vertebral column of A. neura is a rigid frame that lost much of the original flexibility evident in fishes, thus enabling them to transmit forces from limbs to the body. As we know that A. neurons move with limbs rather than swimming with trunk musculature. Further adaptations include the shortening of the body such that they have only nine trunk vertebrae and several fused caudal vertebrae, which form a rod like structure called urostyle. In image, you can see this is urostyle formed by the fusion of caudal vertebrae. On the other hand, limbless Sicilians have 285 vertebrae. Which is a huge difference comparative to a neurons. Skull of frog differ from other vertebrates in terms of weight. It is much lighter than in fishes. Further, it contains fewer number of bones which are less ossified, thus promoting the changes for improved special senses, feeding, and breathing. A neurons entire musculoskeletal system is specialized for jumping and swimming by the power of their hind limbs here in this diagram you can see different muscles are spread throughout their body and are responsible to support the body it is believed that limb muscles are probably derived from radial muscles that was responsible for moving the fins of the fish up and down but the muscle arrangement of tetrapod limb is so complex that their correspondence with fin musculature is still doubted. Anyhow, beside this complexity, we can identify muscles that are arranged in antagonistic group, thus action of one muscle opposes other.
in frog different muscles are responsible for different functions and work antagonistically i will discuss these muscles with you number wise number 1 is abductor muscle whose contraction moves a limb or part away from the midline of the body or from another part second one is adductor muscle whose contraction moves a limb or other part of the body towards the midline of the body or towards another part on number 3 we have flexor muscle whose contraction bends a limb or another part of the body number 4 is extensor muscle whose contraction extends or straighten a limb or other part of the body and finally we have rotators rotator muscles whose contraction causes or assist in the rotation of a part of the body in fish you may remember myomers were organized segmentally in the trunk to provide the power of locomotion but during amphibian evolution these myomers or myotomes modified to support various portion of the body including head and belly instead of helping in locomotion as they were in fishes salamanders and cetaceans